people talk about the ICC issuing an arrest warrant, um, but to be precise, um, there are different parts of the ICC. So one part, the prosecution, has to ask another part, um, a, a group of judges, the pretrial chamber, and say, essentially, dear judges, um, I think there's enough evidence here and enough reason to issue an arrest warrant. Um, and so they have to find first and foremost that there's reasonable grounds to believe that a crime within the jurisdiction of the court has been committed. Evidently, the three judges believe that's the case for these three individuals. No, there's nothing in international criminal law that says you have to wait until the war is over and then you can begin an investigation or begin a trial. Typically, how you have um, uh, this sort of thing. You would have said that, for example, about Milosevic, right? Head of state, wanted by an international court. They, they don't have sufficient backing by an army to come in there and arrest him. He's immune. It's just paper. So typically how it happens is... Um, uh, there is a governmental change and the state itself, that's what happened in um, Rump Yugoslavia and Serbia. Now, I can understand people being very doubtful that that will happen um, for Israel. I don't know about Hamas. And I think the changes in the short term are more likely to have to do with the complex interplay of, of domestic politics and international relations. Um, but I, I just would caution people thinking about this from being too confident in knowing um, the effects, um, uh, how people will respond. Uh, lots of tribunals involve state authority. Um, uh, lots, of, lots of trials involve the use of state authority to commit crimes. Um, but um, uh, you know, at the end of the day, Israel and Hamas aren't on trial. Um, these individuals, if they are arrested and charges are confirmed, they would be the people on, on trial, not the, the states. Um, um, and friends of the court really need to step up and show that they are willing to back the court. Um, and uh, so, you know, you may have the reputation that, boy, it's this big, powerful court uh, with lots of resources and lots of cooperation. Um, but we haven't had sufficient cooperation. Um, uh, when the president of Russia visits Mongolia, um, you know, there, there isn't sufficient cooperation in terms of an arrest. Um, and when the court asks for more money, the Assembly of States parties um, does not always... Uh, uh, follow what, what's indicated here. يعني كثير ممتاز بس ان شاء الله يطلقوا نشوف يوم اسود في نتنياهو لانه عمل جرائم كبيره للشعب الفلسطيني قتل ابنائنا ودمر بيوتنا ونسائنا واطفالنا فاحنا ان شاء الله يشوف يوم في اسود انه ينحبس ويشوف الظلم اللي زي ما ظلمنا انه ينحبس ويا ريت العالم كله يعني ينفذ بس القرار في اعتقاله ويحاسبه على جرائمه اللي عملها للشعب الفلسطيني هذا قرار متأخر جدا اليوم نتنياهو بتعامل مع قطاع غزة بتعامل مع قطاع غزة بكل همجية وإرهاب قطاع غزة الطفل اللي عمره سنتين شارك في 7 أكتوبر ما شاركش في 7 أكتوبر أنا شاركت في 7 أكتوبر ما شاركناش في أخذ 7 أكتوبر ذريعة لارتكاب الجرائم في قطاع غزة قطاع غزة مش إرهابي أطفال شيوخ نساء أنا بالنسبة لي كثير كثير مبسوط لأنه بالنسبة لنا كوضع قتلوا أطفالنا قتلوا أولادنا 
هذا مو بيوتنا فاتمنى من الله انه يصدر الحكم العدل بما يرضي الله زي ما بيقولوها هذه قيادات فوق القانون في المستوى الدولي لان هذه دوله مارقه ولا يمكن ان يطبق عليها هذه محكمه الجنايات وغيرها تطبق على الدول الضعيفه هؤلاء الناس وان صدر عليهم هذا القرار المتاخر بعد اكثر من ما يقرب من 43 الف شهيد 10 الاف جريح 10 الاف مفقود اكثر من 100 الف جريح ان صدر القرار هذا نامل ان يتم الانصاف لكل من قضى في هذه الحرب الظالمه Yes, this uh, decision was very much uh, waited for, expected. It's groundbreaking. Uh, I received it right here from the ICC, International Criminal Court. I think the walls are shaking now. Um, for the victims, I'm already receiving their inputs. Of course, we communicated directly with the victims. We're representing over 300 victims for 14 different crime bases. This decision means that victims from five different crime bases of Hamas on the 7th of October, including hostages in Gaza, still, they can be represented there and will represent them, will bring their voice in the case of Mohammed Daif. The road to justice is a, is a very long one, we know that, and this is a significant step because the chambers, now not only the prosecutor who asked for the arrest warrants, also three judges of the preliminary court have agreed that they issued arrest warrants for torture, extermination, rape and other sexual crimes, um, and for inhumane acts. And uh, this is very significant, the recognition of the victims, that they're saying the truth. There are people out there who don't believe October 7 attacks happened. We see it every day because lives are torn. Of course, the arrest warrants in Israel are received with great shock. They think uh, in Israel the vision the main vision is that the court doesn't see the real situation of Israelis, that there's a misunderstanding of the situation there, um, of, of the reality that for Israelis is seemed for Israelis as imposed. The cause of the victims will be the prioritized and not all this political uh, noise that we are inevitably hearing, it's understood, it's understandable, the political noise, but what I see um, against my eyes are the direct victims I, I represent in hope that when justice recognizes them, they'll be able to start rebuilding something. After the 7th of October, their lives have, uh, you know, are forever changed, and so I hope that this decision will be the first step of their rebuilding.